Hello friends. In the last video, we solved a 1D transient heat conduction problem in Cartesian coordinates using backward time center space or BTCS finite difference method. In this video, we are going to solve the same 1D transient heat conduction problem in Cartesian coordinates using Crank Nicholson finite difference method. Our objectives are to present a simple 1D transient heat conduction problem. We discretize the domain into say 5 grid spacings. We consider a single time step and solve the problem using Crank Nicholson finite difference method. We then vary the grid spacings and time steps and resolve the problem and obtain solutions. We have a 1 meter long copper bar. The initial temperature of the bar is at 0 degrees Celsius. When time t equals 0, the ends, the two ends of the bar are maintained at 100 degrees Celsius. The thermal diffusivity, which is a property of the material, uh, which is given as alpha equals 1 e to the power of minus 4 meter squared per second. The general heat conduction equation in 3D Cartesian coordinates is given as dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square plus dou square t by dou z square plus g over k equals 1 over alpha dou t over dou t where the uppercase t represents the temperature in the domain and is a function of the spatial coordinates x, y, z and t where lowercase t represents the time in seconds. Alpha is the material property called thermal diffusivity given in meter square per second. Alpha equals k over rho c, where k is the thermal conductivity of the material in watts per meter kelvin. Rho is the density of the material in kilograms per meter cube. C is the specific heat capacity of the material in joules per kilogram kelvin. G is the volumetric rate of internal heat generation given in watts per meter cube. Our assumption regarding the material thermal conductivity is given below. The thermal conductivity, for example, along the x-axis does not vary. Likewise, the thermal conductivity along the y and z-axis do not vary. So we call this a homogeneous condition. Also, Thermal conductivities follow the isotropic condition where kx equals ky equals kz equals k. For 1D transient heat conduction with no heat generation, equation 1 reduces to a simpler form. We assume temperature does not vary significantly along y and z directions when compared with x direction. Also, the heat generation term g equals 0. Accordingly, we get dou square t by dou x square equals 1 over alpha times dou t by dou t, where temperature t is a function of x and time. This equation can be rearranged as follows. dou t by dou t equals alpha times dou square t by dou x square. To solve this PDE, we need one initial condition and two boundary conditions. The initial condition is given as t at x comma t equals 0 equals t in. The boundary conditions are t at x equals 0 at any time t equals t end 1 and t at x equals l at any time t equals t end 2 where t is greater than or equal to 0. To obtain t we need to solve the above PDE. We'll, we will utilize finite difference method to solve the above PDE. To do so, we need to replace the partial derivatives with finite difference approximations. We will solve the above problem using Crank-Nicholson method. So by replacing the partial derivatives using finite difference approximations, we get Ti n plus 1 minus Ti n over delta t equals half times alpha times Ti minus 1 n plus 1 minus 2 times t i n plus 1 plus t i plus 1 n plus 1 over delta x square plus t i minus 1 n minus 2 times t i n plus t i plus 1 n over delta x square. 
you fill at d equals alpha times delta t by delta x square then the equation gets updated to minus d times t i minus 1 n plus 1 plus 2 times 1 plus d times t i n plus 1 minus d times t i plus 1 n plus 1 equals d times t i minus 1 n plus 2 times 1 minus d times t i n plus d times t i plus 1 n as shown in equation 4. Equation 4 is the finite difference approximation of the original equation we were trying to solve. Here i represents the known the node location and n the time step on the discretized domain. The finite difference tensor is given below. <coughs> Here we know the temperatures at the bottom level at i minus 1 comma n, i comma n and i plus 1 comma n and temperatures at i minus 1 comma n plus 1 i comma n plus 1 and i plus 1 comma n plus 1 need to be obtained. The above approximation is called crank nicholson method. This is an implicit method. Hence temperatures Ti's at present times n plus 1 need to be obtained based on Ti's at previous steps as shown in equation 4. The equations need to be solved simultaneously as we have unknown temperatures at neighboring points for the same time step. The advantage in using implicit methods are uh, these are condition unconditionally stable. The diffusion number D and the time step still needs to be smaller for accuracy considerations and not stability considerations in general. The advantage of using crank nicholson method compared with the FTCS or BTCS method is we get a higher accuracy in solution that as the truncation error is of the, of the order of delta t square plus the order of delta x square. In the other methods of a truncation error where of the errors where of the order of delta t plus order of delta x square. Now let us discretize the 1D domain into nx or say 5 segments or grid spacings equally spaced as shown below. Note that temperatures at node 1 and node 6 are known and these are the boundary conditions. To apply equation 4, we need to consider the interior nodes 2 to 5. Let i equals 2 and n equals 0. Equation 4 becomes minus d times t11 plus 2 times 1 plus d times t21 minus d times t31 equals d times t10 plus 2 times 1 minus d times t20 plus d times t30. Similarly, for i equals 3, 4, 5 and n equals 0, we get the equations as shown here. Here, t11, t6, t1n, t6n are the boundary conditions for all times and ti0 is the initial condition for all interior nodes. Let delta t equals 100 seconds. Delta x equals L over nx equals 1 over 5 is equal to 0 0.2 meters. Then d equals alpha times delta t by delta x square equals 1 times 10 power minus 4 times 100 by 0 0.2 square equals 0 0.25, which is lesser than or equal to 0 0.5. Note that stability criteria need not be met since Crank Nicholson method is an implicit method. We still target d lesser than or equal to 0 0.5 for accuracy considerations and not for stability considerations. Rearranging the above equations, we get the following. If we let beta equals 2 times 1 plus d and gamma equals 2 times 1 minus d, we rearrange the above set of equations in a matrix form. As shown here, the above 
is of the form a times t n plus 1 plus b times t n uh, plus 2 times d times t b c. Here a and b are the matrices. t is the temperatures at the various no nodal locations and t b c is the temperature at the boundary points. By substituting the values of beta, gamma, d, ic's and bc's, we get the following form, final form, which can be solved using either Thomas algorithm, as the mat matrix we are dealing with is again a tridiagonal matrix. We can also solve the above set of equations using iterative methods such as gauss seidel or successive over relaxation SOR methods. Solving the above equation using Thomas algorithm on MATLAB produces the following results at time t equals 100 seconds. The outer nodes T2 and T5, the temperatures are at 20.2247 degrees C. The inner nodes T3 and T4 equals 2.2472 degrees C. Likewise, we can find the temperatures at these four interior nodes at the next time step by choosing n equals 1 and so on. Graphical results are presented using MATLAB for this case. Using MATLAB or other software, we can develop course for a general case where the number of grid spacing time and time steps can be altered or increased as desired and solutions obtained accordingly. Let's go back to MATLAB and try to solve this problem. We have a total time of 100 seconds and single time step. We have a one meter long bar here shown as an X length and we are dividing this into five spatial grids or five segments. The ends of the bar are, are maintained at 100 degrees C and the initial temperature is at 0 degrees C. Let's run this program and we get the results here. These are the initial conditions, the boundary conditions at 100 degrees Celsius and the initial conditions on the four interior nodes at 0 degrees Celsius. When in the first time step at when t equals 100 seconds, we get the temperature distribution as shown here. At the two nodes, on the out, two outer nodes, we get 20.2247 Celsius and the two inner nodes, we get 2.2472. The boundary nodes are at 100 degrees Celsius. Let's go back to the graphical view. As mentioned earlier, the outermost nodes are at 100 degrees Celsius and the inner nodes are maintained at 0 degrees Celsius at the initial condition. This is shown on the top left hand side of the view. On the bottom left hand side of the view we have the temperature profile at final conditions when time equals 100 seconds the outermost nodes are still at 100 degree celsius but there's a temperature variation on the inner nodes as we calculated earlier and the surface plot is shown on the right hand side now we can go back to our MATLAB and rerun the program with uh, different time steps and different total time and grid spacings. Let the total time be 200 seconds and the total number of time steps be 200 and the total number of uh, 
spatial grids. Let's make it 20 and rerun the program. As uh, mentioned before, the initial conditions remain the same, where the outermost uh, nodal temperatures they remain at 100 degrees Celsius. All the inner nodes they are at zero degree Celsius, and the temperature profile at the final condition, when time equals 2,000 seconds, is shown here. The outermost nodes. The temperatures are still 100 degrees Celsius. On the innermost inner nodes, there is a temperature variation. Towards the center of the uh, domain, center of the bar, the temperatures are the lowest, and the temperatures keep rising towards the from the center to the end, as shown here. On the right hand side we can see the animated graphical view of this, the surface plot. We can see the time varying here. It started with zero seconds and it will go up to 2000 seconds. We can see the temperature variations accordingly. We can change the time, final time, to, to from 2,000 seconds to say 4,000 seconds or a, a different value as based based on what we need, what we are interested in. The color scale is shown on the right hand side here. The color temperature scale. Now our program has fully run. We can go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Let us summarize what we did in this particular video. Here we presented a 1D transient heat conduction problem. We discretized our domain and solved the problem using Crank-Nicholson finite difference method. Note that Crank-Nicholson method is an implicit method and it is unconditionally, unconditionally stable. Crank-Nicholson method has a higher accuracy than the FTCS and the BTCS methods we have seen earlier. The error is of the order of delta t square plus the order of delta x square. When compared with the FTCS or BTCS methods, the errors are of the order of delta T plus delta X square. We varied the grid spacings and time steps and presented the results graphically using MATLAB. In future videos, we can explore more challenging problems. If you have any questions or comments, please post it. Thanks for watching.